so these are all these big German steel tarpon. These are all gold cup trophies. How many of those? I've Did got you five. Won? You won five gold cups. Yeah. What kind of clearance do you have to go through to fish with the president? Do they do all your? Uh, initially, there's some. I fished with Michael Jordan. That's about as big as I've ever got. That's big. I've seen documentaries of Andy. He used to have his own show. I've heard stories about him. The guy has won just about every tarpon tournament there is. Probably one of the best tarpon fishermen, you know, that's around. He, you know, he no longer competes, but world-class tarpon fisherman. But before that, you know, he got his fame from downhill skiing. He was an Olympic downhill skier, a world champion downhill skier. And uh, he has a lot of history. He's an avid outdoorsman, avid hunter, avid, avid fisherman. And it, it's an honor just to get out of the boat with this guy. Uh, I've been, I, I'm a guy that's been so lucky. I mean, look at my life. I, I skied for a living. I became, I was in the broadcast business for 20 years. I became a fisherman. I've, I've traveled the world for 40 some years. Um, and my life is still chasing that road, if you will, with a pretty big spirit. I've always been a fisherman. What, what initially drew me to, to fishing was the, seeing the arc of a fly line going across space and catching animals. It's like, it's, it was very compelling to me. In late February, early March, on the east coast of Florida, a crazy phenomenon happens. Migration of sharks. And we're not just talking about a small number of sharks, we're talking about thousands of sharks. You know, so often you turn on the news and you see these broadcasts of these overhead chopper footage of these, you know, giant pods of sharks which are closing the beaches and, and that's exactly what happens here and it's something that you know we actually look forward to for a fishery. This area is somewhat notorious for having these massive schools of jacks as well. Yeah, we're running down the beach, we're looking for sharks, but you cannot go past the school of these. No, no way. We need, a, we need some chum, you were saying. We gotta fish up the ladder. <laughs> so we got a big school, of, looks like jacks. Well, you know what also I found, like with big schools, you cannot get close enough with a fly rod to strip far enough. Usually okay. you gotta, you usually have to strip kind of far. So I've noticed in the past, the bigger schools, this works best. But if I try to do this with just fly only, it's almost too hard to get the fly far enough away from us to strip far enough to get the bite. Well, I'll so bring this in. is the way to do it. <laughs> yeah, we're just going hookless Yozuri, just gonna rip it across the surface. This, this is gonna be, be so good. sick. I'm, I'm gonna go past him a little bit. Here they come. Here they come. Really? Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. He's trying to bite it. See, now I'm so close, I can't, I can't strip. There he is. Oh, you, <laughs> here's the problem there. <clears throat> See, now it's important just to let all this line come off easily. Not have any friction on my fly line so it doesn't start bouncing. I've got like heavy tackle here. I don't want to wrap a finger with that. Now, once I get him on, now I can pull. And there's not, you can't really do a whole lot now. I just set the drag a little bit heavier and let him take off. But how awesome was that? What a take. God, they came firing in. I mean, how can you, seriously, I mean, how can we go by this, you know? When you run by a school like this, it's like, you gotta be an idiot to just keep running. What a cool take that was. Yeah. I'm 
really excited to get out in the water with Andy. I've seen some footage of him and, and the way that he looks at fishing and the way he's developed techniques to you know, perfect on how much pressure you can put on a fish. So I know there's a lot to learn. And, and that's the big thing about fishing is getting out there, fishing with people that you can learn from. And this is definitely one of those experiences where you have the ability to learn a lot. See, if I, if I if you see so many people just lifting with a rod tip like this with a big bend, yeah. two things. One, you're just using your bicep and you're bending the rod tip. There's no pressure being put on the fish. And I can't pull that hard for very long with my bicep. So if I just lean back like this with a straight arm, I can pull with my legs and my back. This. That, that fly is, he's choked that thing down. Yep. Huh? That's a Fatty McGee, bro. <laughs> that is full grown. How heavy do you think that is? I mean, I don't, I, how often do you catch jacks like this? How can you not pass this up? Voila! Right? That's not even our targeted species. I know. But you said, hey, we're gonna get a couple jacks, use them as chum. There's yeah. your chum on the fly, wow. That's a big dog, right? God! What do you think it weighs, 30? Yeah, it's solid, I guess. 25, 30? 25, yeah, 26. We got bait. Like they say, he who dies with the most toys wins. <laughs> so they say. These are, I mean, but look how beautiful these things are. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, a lot of these are old ones that I used to, this is a prototype hardy that we, you know, it was a prototype for the Fortuna. You know, a lot of these are some of the older reels that I used in tournaments, you know. Beautiful, beautiful. You know, and I'm starting to give some away to kids that don't don't have the money to, you know, get in, yeah. involved with the game. So Jose, the last tr trade show he was at, we were at the Hell's Bay booth, and he wanted a copy of my book. So I said, "Give me your address." So Jose wrote his name and number here, and then he died shortly thereafter. Yeah, I, I met him just prior to his, at a Mercury event down at the IGFA and talked with him briefly, right? yeah. you know, it was a couple months before he died. Yeah, what a great guy. And somebody came up and said, hey, Jose, can I get your autograph? And there I was taking a photograph of Jose and somebody, and Jose got a big kick out of it because I was supposed to be the big Olympic guy, you know, and here Jose, they wanted his autograph. Yeah, yeah. It was awesome. We laughed for a half hour over that one. Oh! <laughs> Look at that! There's no mistaking. When you get in an area where these sharks are, you know it. It's not hard to miss 80 to 100 pound sharks corkscrewing out of the water everywhere you look, creating this massive, you know, disturbance on the water. It's a spectacle to see. It's, it's an incredible, it gets the blood going. You know that you're going to have multiple opportunities at these fish. and. Um, it, it was such a cool sight first thing in the morning. Keep it simple. Yeah, so yeah, so this is gonna be perfect because we don't wanna hook one of these, these sharks with a treble hook, so it's gonna be hard to get off, but this is gonna be awesome. Just throw a big choke car on there. Yeah. Here it comes, here it comes. You got him. I think I got him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What a take. Wow. That was awesome. Oh, he's going. We might have to chase him. Here, let's go. To, let me, uh, we can chase him with a troll motor if you wish. Yeah, with a big motor. Grab one. Well, they're going to go a different direction. They're going to start losing stuff, dude. Yeah, well, let's go chase yours. Is he off? Yeah. Thank God. Wow. There was ones coming, like, trying to eat at the same time. I wonder if they crossed lines. It's a little frightening to think that these are areas that we're out there swimming all the time. But amazingly enough, we cohabitate with these sharks. There's very few incidents of shark bites 
but you're, you're, you're seeing these sharks so close to the beach. And it's amazing that these sharks love to run down the beach this close because this is where the bait is. It, and we saw that running down the beach, everything began to change. We started to see more bait fish and we started to see more birds, you know, feeding on the bait. And then you started to see the bluefish and the jacks. And it was just a, the diversity of, of life and the amount of life that you started to see, you knew you were getting in an area where there was gonna be some sharks. It was a feeding frenzy. There were corkscrewing out of the water everywhere. And we're talking only a couple hundred yards off the beach. These things are, you know, five, six, seven foot sharks that are just coming completely out of the water. I got it. They're coming. Cut the trolling motor. Cut the trolling motor. Wow. There, there he is. Got him on fly? Yeah. <laughs> That's right, that's right. <laughs> that's like a tarpon. Now we're talking. That didn't take long. I think we might want to go chase this fish. Look at him spinning. Oh, he's off. Off? Yep. It's <laughs> a good chance something broke. <laughs> so Andy's known for tarpon fishing. He lives in Florida six months out of the, out of the year. He's down in the Keys for one month. And obviously tarpon is how he got his, his history and how he got his notoriety. But what he explained to me was one of the things that he really enjoys doing is shark fishing. And it was, it was almost eye-opening to me that, wow, okay. I'm a full-time guide in this area and I'm looking at him for technique. So it was a great marriage of, of opportunities for us to get together, to spend some time together, for me to learn from him and him actually to learn about this area. So it was, it was a great opportunity for both of us. Another. Oh God! Uh oh. Did you get bit? Yeah, I think yeah. I got him. Yeah, you do. What's really fascinating about fishing is the mindset when you're connected to a big animal. How am I going to catch that fish? And and the and the, the space you go to in a tournament, and or just fun fishing. You got a big old shark on. You're trying to apply pressure, and you get the angles, and you're you're thinking, Oh my God, is this not going to hold? Because you've got all this this resistance so now you're connected to an animal and that's what i love about fishing and walking that fine line of catching that fish and or breaking them off so all we're doing right now is just trying to collect that fly line because unless you have a non-stretch fly line it stretches 10 percent so 100 feet of fly line that's 10 feet of stretch and so you can't really hurt that fish unless you get up to the fat part where you have something to hang on to and really pull there's your fly line Shaking his head. So you can you can hang on to that handle and you can crank put that rod tip in the water and pull back nice and smooth. Don't go to the side, just pull up as hard as you can. It was great. I'm fighting the fish and he he's like, give me the rod. You know, here, I'm gonna take the rod. Let me show you how to do it. Isn't it like you're almost like, no, this is my fish. Don't break my fish off, Andy. Don't break my fish off. You do that, you you hand the rod over to him and you watch how he fights it for 10 seconds and you're like, okay. And then you pick the rod back up and put that maximum pressure on, you know, get my arms closer in and just use that bottom section of that rod. You, you bring that shark in, you know, a heck of a lot faster that way. What's max pressure you think you could put on as far as pound wise? Well, I, well, I lift weights. I lift a, a bar that's 16 pounds. So you know to take it right to that point. I go to 12 pounds. That way for between 12 and what that mono is going to break at 10% above 16, there's a good good window of gray. But we're put we're putting more than that on this fish just because we can. We've got terminal tackle, so you can see you know how effective these fish are for testing you know rods and reels and knots and you know. Well, just testing your technique, perfecting your technique. That, like that you too. said, you're going to get one shot a day at a tarpon to have a good day, and you don't you know. You come out here, you get multiple shots a day, and it's, it's, it's a great practice field. There you go, nice. That fish got some weight to it too. That's yeah. not a little shark. No, they're all like 80, 90 when they get in the big schools like this out here. <sighs> there you go, that's all right. 
tip it broke. That's all, that's all. I was just gonna cut it anyway. We got him. Yo, buddy. Woo! <laughs> Good job. Wow. Huh? Yeah, it was in there. Yeah, see, you, okay. your shark, your shark bit here. You can see that. Yozuri's been a leader in the tackle industry for over 50 years. When you first think of Yozuri, you just may think of hard baits, but there's so much more. I recently switched over all my reels to the Yozuri Super Braid, and I gotta tell you, this stuff's incredible. The type of fishing that I do every day with clients, it's in areas that are heavy structure. All this structure that we're fishing around is loaded with barnacles, and these are sharp edges that can easily cut you off. This stuff is so abrasion resistant, and that's one of the most important things to me when I'm fishing. Another quality that I love about this line is that it's white. I love to be able to see the line. I think it's always important to be able to see that bite before you feel the bite. What I pair this up to now is the new Yozuri Top Knot Leader. And I gotta tell you, again, another super abrasion resistant product. And it's a thin diameter, it's easy to tie. That's important, especially when you're tying to these thinner diameter braids. Also, abrasion resistance. And now the staple for Yozuri, the hard bait, the 3D inshore series. This is something I'm excited about. These lures were meant to be thrown up against any kind of structure and to begin swimming immediately, effectively. And that's important. Heavy structure areas, I don't have to you know, wait for a lip plug to get down. These things are gonna start working. And these things are extremely affordable. They come in a very reasonable price point. It's definitely one of those lures that you need to have in your tackle box. Are you allowed any size bite tippet or that no, has to be? No, it's got to be 12 inches or less. All fly fishing. But what about weight wise, strength wise? The, the monofilm, it's got to be, the tournament dictates that. So a holly okay. is 12 pound test. You know, the other weight fish. 12 pounds this. This is, is 12. Is, this, is, this can be anything. Anything? Yeah. And what did you typically do? 60? Depends on the water clarity. So if I got real clear water, we might be using 60. But if you use anything lighter, the fish, if you got a big fish, it might wear through. For my relationship with fishing, I, I really enjoy telling people what I know and how it might help them. And actually, you know what, they used to call these the Christmas fish because the spinners used to show up near Christmas with the cold water because the bait, Spanish mackerel, and the bluefish come down with that colder water. But with global warming issues, the water is not cold that early. A lot of times now, these fish don't show up until February. It's just a, um, a phenomenon for this time of year when the cold water comes down and the bait are here, these big sharks come in. It's almost like uh, the Serengeti of the ocean. You know, in Africa you have the migration of the wildebeest and, and these big animals. You know, this is the ocean Serengeti and the ocean migration. And uh, I find it captivating. Okay, watch this. <laughs> <laughs> Got a nibble! I mean, it's crazy action. You're ripping that plug across and jacks are chasing it and bluefish are chasing it. Boom, a bluefish eats it. I'm dangling the bluefish next to the boat. And before you know it, one of them sharks comes up and just eats everything. And he grabbed that thing and he wrapped me around the trolling motor before I knew it. My brand new rod snapped. The tip of my brand new blackfin rod was broken. I'm not afraid to admit it. It happens to me. But you know what? The, the, the fight wasn't over. I'm still... You know, I was still on this fish. The line had not broken. We unwrapped it off the trolling motor and, and I was excited to get this one to the boat. Never mind the broken tip, which I broke on the trolling motor. That was my fault. Oh, we have a treble hook here. Yes. I wanted to give you something. You gotta cut the plug and don't get bit. I'm just gonna try to hold his head here. Got it, Andy. Be careful. There you go. Nice. What up? Good job, brother. Thanks for the call. Oh. Best wow. call I've had in a long time. That was mayhem, guys. I snapped the rod on the trolling motor. That was my fault. But we got him on that Yozuri. We got five or six more rods. We got plenty of rods. Sorry, Blackfin. That was my bad. What I've done, this is just kind of a simple way to teach people and yourself how to pull on stuff. And when I was tournament fishing, I wanted to figure out how to pull on 12 pounds. Mount this to the underside of a table 
and now I can connect the butt section of my fly line to this 12 pound barbell. So when you hold this 12 pounds, you think, how am I gonna pick this up with a fly rod? Most people do this, you got a big bend. I can pull as hard as I want, and I may get that up off the ground, but look at all the pressure here. Okay. I'm not physically strong enough to hold it. So you've got to use the butt of the rod to lift and use your legs. You can see how you, you can learn so much from sharks because if you go tarpon fishing, you might get lucky to catch one tarpon a day. So most people go for years with catching only a couple of fish. Now they get one on and they're afraid to pull hard because they don't want to lose it. But unless you pull hard, you're not going to catch that tarpon. So, so my contention is go catch some sharks, learn how to pull. So now when you go to the Keys and you, 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 you got that tarpon connected, now you're not afraid to pull because you know you can pull hard and you're going to catch that fish. And two, when you catch that tarpon quickly, it's not going to have any lactic acid in it or nearly as much and it's not going to get shark bit. So it's better for you and it's better for the tarpon to understand how to pull up most effectively. You want to go cast for a little bit? I think you'll dig it. All right. I haven't heard a curse word yet out of you. Yeah. Are you, are you holding Save it? Save that. <laughs> oh, I'd be just bleeping it out. <laughs>